So given how much you guys liked my last Ansible video where we updated some servers in the cloud, this video is going to be another one about Ansible where we're going to dive into some of the more advanced modules. Now we're not going to get into more technical topics like roles and Ansible Galaxy and things like that. We're just going to keep it relatively simple and get into some new modules. So the premise of this video is we're going to be building a portable workstation with Vagrant. I already did a video about Vagrant a year or more ago. Vagrant's basically a tool that allows you to build and provision virtual machines for development or server purposes and things. For the context of this video, we're going to be using Vagrant to build a virtual box and we're going to use Ansible to provision it. With that said, you'll need to install Vagrant on your system and it's usually available in your repos. If not, you can go to the HashiCorp website and just download it. And of course, we'll need Ansible. So getting started with a new Vagrant box requires one thing, a file called Vagrant file. There's no file extension, but it is technically a Ruby file. So if you set the file type to Ruby in your text editor, you'll get some text highlighting things. The VM box we're gonna be using is called Roboxes Fedora 28. So we'll define the internal name and the host name of the VM, and we'll tell Vagrant that we wanna provision the VM with Ansible. Now we need to create an Ansible playbook. I like using the main.yaml convention if you're using a single playbook. For larger projects, it's not uncommon at all to have multiple playbooks, especially when you're dealing with lots of roles. But if there's only one playbook, I just call it main. So just like the last playbook we wrote, we need a hosts. We're gonna call it Fedora because that's the internal name of the box. Since everything we'll be doing will require sudo, we'll do become true, and then we'll set the tasks. Let's start with something simple like disabling SE Linux. All we have to do for SE Linux is define it and then set the state to disabled. Now that we have this super simple playbook, we can actually start the box. We'll do that by typing vagrant up. Now I've already played around with this particular Fedora image previously, so it's already stored in my cache. When you run Vagrant up for the first time on a fresh image, it has to reach out to the Vagrant site to pull the image down. These images are usually about a gigabyte in size, so they can take some time to download. Interestingly enough, I can't disable SE Linux initially on this image because it doesn't have the right Python library. So we'll create a new task to install that particular package. The module we're going to use here is DNF because that's what Fedora uses. We'll set the name of the package and the state to present. And this time, instead of running Vagrant up, we're going to run Vagrant provision because the box is already running. We just need to reprovision it. As you can see, Vagrant started this box in headless mode, which is handy for testing. And when we run Vagrant provision, it will install the package and disable SE Linux for us. Now let's go ahead and turn this Vagrant box into an actual development workstation. To do that, we're going to need to install a bunch of packages and set the default target to graphical. This Fedora image is based on Fedora server, so by default it will drop into multi-user mode. We need graphical because it's a workstation. So we'll use the shell module to call system control set default graphical. I couldn't find a module that actually lets you interact with system control in this way. And because there's a number of packages we want to install in one fell swoop, we're going to use an Ansible loop, which is really, really handy for this sort of operation. We're installing the LXD desktop because it's the smallest desktop with the fewest number of dependencies. And we're also going to install some sundry development tools. Because we've added that with items block in the DNF module, Ansible is going to iterate through each item in that array and install it. This is obviously going to take some time, so let's go ahead and fast forward. And now that we're done installing the packages, we can go over to the VM and log in. But notice how we're still in multi-user mode. That's because, just as if you install the packages without Ansible, the system isn't going to magically jump over to graphical target mode, so we'll reboot. And now we have a login screen that we can log into. So we just had Ansible install the desktop environment and some other things, including Docker. However, there's still a few more items that we need to provision. For example, I need Docker to start up as soon as I log in, so we'll need to enable the Docker daemon through systemd. We'll use the systemd module to set the Docker daemon to enable, We'll also need to make sure that the Docker group exists and that the Vagrant user is added to that Docker group so that we can use it without using sudo. So after running the playbook, the Docker daemon is started, but I still can't use it without sudo. That's because I have to log back in. Of course, once I log out and log back in, I can use Docker without sudo and everything just sort of works. Using a tool like Ansible to provision your Vagrant box is a pretty common approach, but you could very well just do it with Bash too. And it goes without saying that everything that we did here in this video, you could do with Bash. In fact, you could probably do it with fewer lines of Bash versus the number of lines in this YAML file. 
But like I talked about in the last video, there's a number of reasons why you wouldn't want to use Bash for this sort of thing. I'm not going to iterate through each and every reason why you should use a CM tool versus Bash. There are lots and lots of blogs and things out there to explain why you don't want to use Bash in production versus a CM tool. But anyways, this is a relatively common and simple workflow for using Ansible. If you liked this video and you want to see more like it, leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter. I'm really pleased to see just how popular these Ansible videos are. This is what I do for my career. Like professionally, I write Ansible and do DevOps stuff as a job. So yeah, I'm going to wrap it up here. I appreciate all your support. And if you want to take your support a step further, you can always be a backer of mine on Patreon. And thanks a ton for watching.